Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. And if you're a subscriber, welcome back. Any of you that's been following along for a while know that I have an off-grid cabin in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's 26 acres and it has a little 16 foot by 16 foot dry cabin with a loft in it. Last fall, after I purchased it, I went up there and I stripped the inside, got it down to the studs. I plan on rebuilding the inside of it to make it a little nicer than it was. It was just an old hunting camp that's been set there for a few years. I'm heading back up at the end of this week and I'm actually going to raise it up, put like a crawl space under it. I've built myself some floating footers that I'm taking up there. That's in another video also. You can check that out. So I'm heading up there to do that in a few days and I wanted some temporary lighting inside. I don't have a solar system yet and I plan on putting one on, but until then I need some kind of temporary lighting. I do have a 4000 watt Honda generator I'm taking up there with me, so I have power, but I don't want to run that thing all night long, you know, for power inside the place. I like the peace and quiet, that's why I got an off-grid place. What I need is some type of temporary lighting for the evening hours inside the cabin. And I come up with this idea, actually by accident, I kind of want to share it with you. I don't have one of those large 500, 1000, 1500 watt power banks that a lot of people have like Jackery's or Blue Eddy or those things. So I need to make something or just need to come up with something that I can put some temporary lighting for the evenings either outside or inside the cabin. I found something by accident that I didn't even know exists. So I'm going to show you what I found on Amazon and what I'm going to do with it. You might be surprised. Like I said, I'm bringing up a 4000 watt generator so I will have access to electricity and be able to use my power tools, charge these batteries and have them for the building project that I'm doing. Any of us that do any kind of building projects or around the house or whether you're a professional or a homeowner, most everybody has some type of battery operated power tools. I just happen to like Makita. There's many a good brands out there. Yours may be Ryobi, it may be DeWalt, it may be some other brand, but there's a lot of good battery power tools out there. Most of us that have battery power tools have extra batteries. I mean, you don't want just one battery, it runs out, then you gotta stand around, you know, doing nothing and wait for that battery to charge. So most of us will buy a couple, three sets of batteries. We'll, we'll buy enough that when one's charging, we always got one or two more. So I was on Amazon looking for battery packs to buy a few extra because I'm gonna be out there at that off-grid cabin and I wanna make sure that I can have enough that I don't have to stop and wait. I wanna just keep going. And I did find some battery packs. I can get a 10 pack for my Makita's, real Makita batteries. I'm gonna go ahead and buy the 10 pack of batteries. That way I have extra ones so when they're all charged, they don't have to run the generator consistently all day long. And if you like the peace and quiet of the great outdoors, you probably don't want that generator running at night or during the day anyway. One of the things I found while looking for the batteries is in this little box and I'm going to show you what it is. I didn't know they existed which you know sometimes you just don't know everything. Imagine that. <laughs> anyway now what I found was this little power pack adapter that hooks to the top of my Makita battery. It's got a fuse, it's got an on and off switch, it's got your red and black wire for DC current, batteries, that you can hook to lighting or just about anything else that's 12 volt. I know it says 18 volt, we'll get to it. And this thing will attach to the top of this battery. Now I have power. The other thing I got was this rope light. It's an LED rope light. One end of it has a plug on it that you can plug more of these rope lights in. The other end of it, red and black wire that I can hook to this power pack unit and I can have myself a set of portable lights that run off the same batteries I use for my tools. Now if you look here at these directions on the rope lighting, they do make an AC power supply that you can use for it. It'll convert down to anywhere between 12 and 24 volts. This rope light isn't necessarily for 12 volt or 24 volt. It'll actually work with anything. So these 18 volt batteries are just fine to supply these things. I just wanted you to see that. I'm bypassing this power supply that I'd plug into a wall because there's nothing to plug into right now. And I'm using battery only. What I'm going to do with these 
is solder them to this battery. Now what's kind of neat about it, the same company that makes these, if you look at this, got them from Makita, for DeWalt, for Ryobi, for Milwaukee. I don't know what other brands, but most people have one of those kind of tools and you could check to see if they have them for the brand you have. And that means you have instant power anywhere for lighting in an off-grid situation with just the same battery you use for your tools. And I thought, man, that's a pretty good idea. So what I'm gonna do is put this stuff together right now, show you how it works. And this may be something you might wanna do if you're going camping, you know, going out in a tent and you want some extra power or extra lighting, just bring your battery along, snap the thing in, you got lights. The nice thing about it, a two pack of them is $15.11. I'll leave the link for this stuff, the bottom in the uh, description. You can check it out for yourself. I am not sponsored by either one of these companies. Uh, this is just something I'm doing on my own and I figure, well, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a little bit of review. We'll use it this week up there and uh, you can see how it works if you follow along with uh, the videos. I think the first thing we'll do is strip these wires back just a little bit. gonna cut this little piece of shrink tube in half just kind of slide it on there so I don't forget for later I'm gonna go ahead and unroll this so I don't accidentally burn something that uh, it's not supposed to be burnt I got me a little metal plate I like to put these down to keep the heat off my workbench I'm gonna go ahead and twist these up get them on there get a little flux on there A little bit of flux on this one. I like to solder my wires together. I've had these butt joints come apart too many times, so soldering seems to work the best. We'll start with the one I did first. Slide this shrink tube up, pull it about halfway, straighten this wire out alongside there, and again, push the shrink tube up. Nice thing about this, it also keeps moisture, water off the connection. All right, let it set and cool off. Okay. I've got the wires soldered, shrink wrapped, got a fuse inside here, and it's ready to go. For demonstration purposes, I've got it up on my wall here and across the top so we can see actually what it looks like. I'm gonna hook up the battery and turn it on. Got the battery hooked up, and there we go. We have some lighting. You can see that it throws off quite a bit of light. That is an LED strip light. It's 16 foot long. You can get them in two or three different lengths. The good thing about LED is they don't use as much power, so they last longer. I'm not sure how long that 18 volt battery will last. I am going to put it on the charger, get it completely charged, and then turn it on and leave these lights on. See how long it takes for it to run these things low. Got that hooked up. Let's get into my phone. Gonna hide the password. And we're going to hit turn this on and hit start. I'm not gonna sit here and film this till it's done, but I will keep an eye on it. I'm loading up my truck to go up to the cabin this week. I'll get back when this thing quits. One hour and the light's still going strong. Well, it just went past three hours. Light is still on. Well, it's been six hours and nine minutes. And that battery still got that thing shining. We're a little over nine hours. We passed 10 hours and the light was still shining. So I ended the test. LED lighting does not use a lot of power. In fact, they use quite a bit less than if you were using your drills, your planers, anything like that. I think this is a great way to supply power to lighting for an off-grid cabin or camping. Well, I hope you found this video informative. This is an inexpensive way to use battery tools you already have to build a lighting system that can be used camping in a tent, in an off-grid cabin. It may be only temporary for a while. It could be something permanent. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. 
If you have a friend that's looking for some type of temporary lighting, show them this video, share it with them. This may be something that would help them as they already have the batteries. These little battery hubs aren't that expensive. Like I said, they're $15 for two of them. I believe you can buy a single one for around $9. Rope lighting runs anywhere from $11 to about 20 different lengths. Uh, they're LEDs, they last a long time. Consider sharing it with a friend, make one yourself. And if you've enjoyed the video, Go back and check out some of my other content. If you like that, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you push the little bell notification, you'll get notices every time I put up a new video. Thank you again for watching, and God bless.